Well, Stacy, when I was 29, my life was on top of the world. I had just finished graduate school and I actually was making money for the first time. And I had met the man of my dreams on a chairlift and we had bought a fixer upper and we were planning a wedding and all these things were happening. And then one day I woke up and I was blind in one eye. And I went to the eye doctor and it turned out I had multiple sclerosis. When you get first diagnosed with something, you go into what I call a health crisis mode. and and it spurs you into all kinds of action, hopefully. <laughs> and it did for me, because what it did for me was I asked that question, how can I be more proactive about the future of my disease and my own future? It matters most to me, after all. At that time, as Anne mentioned, I was a technical writer and an instructional designer, and also a published journalist. I had been a journalist since 93. But here I was, I was facing this crisis, and of course it was my eye, and I was a writer, and I'm like, what am I gonna do? I can't read, I can't write, what am I going to do? And so I started researching, because that was something I already knew how to do. MS is what kind of moved you to make sure that you eat a healthy diet. It's true, right? because multiple sclerosis is such a capricious disease. It yeah. really is a snowflake disease. It affects everyone differently. But, you know, at 29, it's a pretty mm -hmm. scary to look at your future and say, I'll probably end up in a wheelchair if mm -hmm. I don't change my life. Yeah. Every person's experience is absolutely unique, and I can certainly not speak for anybody else. But for me, I've been very fortunate, and I think that my MS has been contained very well mm -hmm. because I do eat a healthy diet, and I believe in eating whole foods, and if you get the nutrition that your body needs to function well, then it'll do better. The best way for me to keep myself healthy was to have a healthy diet. And I thought, well, that's great, except for I don't really know what a healthy diet is, and I didn't know how to cook. So I did some more research and I've learned that, well, the best healthy diet you can do for anybody, whether they're sick or not, is to eat whole foods instead of processed foods. And I thought, okay, well, that's great, except for I don't know how to cook. And I certainly don't know how to cook whole foods. We had just recently received a Dutch oven, just like this one, as a wedding gift. And we had thought, oh, this is such a cute little pot, but we have no idea what to do with it. So we started experimenting around making one pot meals. I went over to my oven and I turned it on as high as it would go because I was hungry and I wanted to eat more quickly and nobody had ever taught me the rules of cooking, which can sometimes be helpful when you don't know the rules. So I cranked it up to 450 degrees and I threw in a fish fillet and some vegetables and some herbs and spices and put the lid on and tossed it in the oven and in about half an hour, it just started to smell heavenly. So we pulled it out and that just became the way that we ate. Could I find anybody else who had a recipe like mine? And what I found was that no, nobody else had ever published that I could find a recipe that uses my technique. So I sat down and I wrote out what I consider to be an instruction manual. How do you do this? As my last career was as an instructional designer, which meant that I developed training programs mostly on computer systems for big Fortune 500, mostly telecom companies. So I figured I know how to break down a process into steps, I can do this. And I broke it down into discrete steps and I wrote out some recipes and I, I made a little homemade book and I started handing it out as a wedding gift with a little Dutch oven. Little book of recipes and, and instructions and a Dutch oven. And I thought this was great and I got back tremendous feedback. I think I went to 30 weddings that year, it was a lot. <laughs> so, but I kept getting great feedback. So I thought, well, okay, well maybe I could actually publish a book. So I developed it further into a manuscript and I started chopping it around. And I spent five years looking for an agent and a publisher. And at the end of five years, I had a stack of rejection letters that all said pretty much the same thing. It's a great idea, it's a good manuscript, but no one knows who you are and nobody buys cookbooks from a nobody. She's the author of Glorious One Pop Meals. I'm with Elizabeth Yarnell this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kara. All right, so One Pop Meals means a lot less cleanup. Yes. Hey, but really healthy, too, are the meals. Really that healthy. Cook. Not only less cleanup, but way less preparation. Really? It is so easy to do this. And this is a method, actually, that I invented and patented. So it's totally new and different. Nobody's ever done it before. So all of a sudden, here in 2005, I was a patent, a bona fide inventor, a patent holder. <laughs> but I still couldn't get published. With my cooking method, none of these cellular walls break down. It's almost like flash cooking. It happens very, very quickly. So when it comes out, each ingredient maintains its integrity and you have actually a whole meal where you have your entree and your carbohydrates and your vegetable side dishes all separate. It's not, there's nothing stew-like about it. 
the average prep time for our glorious one pot meal is somewhere around about 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. And then it'll go into the oven for about 45 minutes. One of the big things I've noticed through your recipe and just having you on, your meals are so easy to create. It, does that help? I mean, I would imagine that's a big plus since you're suffering from MS. It is. And in fact, the, one of the big reasons why I created this method of cooking was to combat my own fatigue. I knew I needed to eat healthily, but I didn't want to spend hours in the kitchen preparing whole foods, and I certainly didn't want to spend oops, excuse me, hours cleaning up afterwards. Right. So that's a big plus for these recipes. I'm curious now. So it's been about about a decade since you were diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, you seem yeah, well. You are. You're so vibrant. I think you talk about <laughs> this last decade of your journey. It's been. <laughs> how, you just talked about it. You've turned these lemons into lemonade. Well, you know, I am healthier now than I've ever been. I've had MS now for 10 years. I have not had a problem since 2002, and I have never felt healthier, happier, in better shape, more energetic. And I know a lot of it has to do with how I've been eating. And now that I've been eating now for 10 years, healthily, healthy foods, whole foods, uh, trying to eliminate all the toxins from our, from our environment that go into my body, that go on my body, I can tell the difference. I don't feel 40. If anybody would have told me at 40 I would feel the best in my life, I would have laughed at them. But it's true. Well, that's a little bit about me and my journey. I am facing a potentially disastrous medical condition with dire consequences for my future. I needed a solution. I did my research. I invented a method to help myself and others easily attain better health. I even got a patent for it. Now I promote health, wellness, and personal empowerment on stages across the country. What can I do for you today?